This is a 38-year-old man reporting slight sensitivity to cold stimuli. A bite-wing radiograph reveals several interproximal caries lesions. The maxillary second premolar shows a large distal caries and a minor mesial caries lesion. The cold sensitivity test gives a slightly exaggerated response for this tooth. The diagnosis of reversible pulp inflammation is made. Anesthesia is administered and the quadrant isolated with rubber dane. Note that the occlusal surface is intact. The distal lesion is accessed with a high-speed small bird. Same for the mesial lesion. Removal of carious tissue is initiated with low-speed long neck round bursts under water spray. After removal of large part of carious tissue, the deepest layers of softened dentin, usually referred to as firm or leather dentin, is removed exclusively with sharp hand excavators. This is erroneously believed to be affected but non-infected. Our research demonstrated that this dentin is instead heavily infected and must be removed. The fear of a pulp exposure is not a valid reason to accomplish an incomplete excavation, leaving bacteria over the pulp. The cavity is disinfected with a chlorhexidine solution. Particular care is taken to remove tissue debris from the undercuts. Special microexcavators are used for this purpose. Excavation is now completed. Only clinically sound dentin is left over the cavity floor. Note that, adjacent to the pulp chamber, excavation is terminated on the tertiary dentin, which can be recognized by its different color. This tissue, more sclerotic and less tubular, was produced in response to the carious attack over the time. The deepest part of the cavity is covered with a calcium hydroxide base and build-up of the crown is accomplished with composite materials. Given the severe loss of dentin and the weakness of residual cusps, this tooth will require cusp protection through an indirect restoration.